Hello and welcome to my channel. So in today's video we are going to be talking about how to improve your writing with word choice. Now what I'm going to touch on mainly in this video is, is just some things that you can ask yourself about your writing to improve your word choice, um, but also things that you should be able to say at the end of your writing. Um, you know, statements you should be able to make about your writing once it is finished or, you know, close to being finished. Now, word choice is probably one of my favorite things to talk about when it comes to writing or speaking or whatever it may be. And the reason being is word choice is so impactful on what message is being conveyed. The way we express ourselves is so, it's such a beautiful thing. Um, the ability to have language that, you know, can, can just perfectly express what we're feeling is it's really kind of magical. The interesting thing about words is that they are so arbitrary. You know, I can I can say, you know, this is a tree and this is a leaf, but but those words don't actually embody what it is. Um same thing with like a table or a shirt. Like there's nothing about those sounds about the letters about that word that embody the thing, but what it does when we're reading or when we're speaking is it, it cues another person's brain to, to share in our experience, to share in our reality. You know, the, the language we use, it, it has a huge impact on even how we understand the world. If you've ever seen, um, the movie Arrival, which I, hi if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend that movie. I love that movie. Um, but it illustrates really well how important language is to how we understand the world. That's why it's so heartbreaking when, um, you know, colonized cultures lose their language because I think the world really is losing a A really important way of looking at the world that is lost when a people lose their native language. So I love word choice, clearly. <laughs> um, I, I think it's fascinating when we think about how our working vocabularies these days, I, I want to say it's like in the five to seven thousand range, like five thousand to seven thousand words that we use regularly. You know, I I might know the word juxtaposition or antidote, but that doesn't mean I necessarily use them regularly. Um, but like I know what they mean and I can use them. But our working vocabularies are pretty slim and crazy thing about that is when you look at someone like Shakespeare, now I've seen a lot of different numbers, but there, there are, uh, there's some evidence that his working vocabulary was about 31,000 words. Um, and you know, so that's ones that he used in his writing, in his plays and whatnot which that's just his working vocabulary and um, they think that he probably knew about like 50,000 words and not only that but he also he invented some of the words that we still use today and so moving on um one of the ways to really notice the impact of word choice 
is like let's let's take the sentence um, Susie began to cry now that tells us you know a short little snippet and we can picture someone named Susie crying now that's very basic though let's try saying instead Susie wept bitterly okay well my mind pictures something very different from just Susie cried and that's the power of word choice you know you you say cry and you can picture that but then you say wept bitterly and you picture probably still Susie crying but you picture a little bit more specifically and so what is wonderful about word choice is we have the power to like pinpoint exactly what it is we want our reader to see. You may have an image in your mind of someone crying and you can just say they cried, but maybe that's not fully expressing the pain that you want your reader to understand that character feels. Um, and so word choice allows you to pinpoint that, to get as close to the reality of it as possible. Even though the words are arbitrary, we can use them to help reel another person's brain into understanding and, and picturing exactly what it is we want them to. So that is the, the power of word choice. Now, um, I, I do want to share a couple of quotes quickly just to kind of like further express what what is important about um, focusing in on that right word and one of them is from A.E. Hausman and he said I do not choose the right word I get rid of the wrong one so like with my example of Susie cried we're gonna get rid of cried because it's the wrong wrong word for that where um, wept bitterly or you know we could even like go on to instead of telling what they were doing describing what they were doing and say a single tear rolled down Susie's cheek and that's even different than wept bitterly um, so sometimes it's not about necessarily even finding the right word but just like keep on trying different words until you land on the one that's like oh that's right you know st keep on getting rid of the ones that just aren't conveying you conveying what you wanted to um and and then Mark Twain he he said the difference between the right word and nearly the right word is the same as the difference between lightning and the lightning bug, you know, like a little firefly. And I love that because, you know, it, it does just speak again to the power of words. You know, when you you say one word and it's like, oh, that's that's the firefly. Like it it gets the point across. Um, but it, when you find the right word, it's just that bolt of lightning, and it, it's there. It's right. It's it, it's creating the scene you need it to. Um, and so what you need to be asking yourself as you are writing um, to help improve your word choice. One of the things is just, will my reader understand my words? Um, now this does require you to know who your audience is. Um, if you are writing for a class let's say for your teacher then you know you probably are okay using the words that are within your own uh, working vocabulary within your vernacular but if you are being assigned to I don't know let's say write something for for a class of first graders 
um, that you're going to present at like a storytelling festival or something, then you want to keep in mind that you are going to be reading this or sharing this with first graders. So make sure that you are uh, being conscious of their level of understanding and don't don't make you know too crazy of descriptions that might not be understandable to a, a first grader. Now, uh, the second question that you need to be asking yourself is, have I used specific, again, specific, getting your reader to understand exactly what it is you want them to, and intriguing words? Um, and again, there, there are some words out there that as you start to expand your vocabulary, you might start collecting like your own favorite words. Like I, I, I think the word discombobulate is great. Um, and effulgent, I, I love that word. And so, so make sure that you're using interesting words, intriguing words, specific words, but also understandable. And then when you are done with your writing, of course you should always read through <laughs> what you are working on before turning it in and submitting it. Just reading something out loud is part of a really good editing process um, because your brain autocorrects when you're reading silently. So read out loud, you catch stuff. But anyway, um, once you are done and you've read through it, you should be able to say that my words convey the exact intended message in a precise, interesting, and natural way. And then finally, you should be able to say my words are powerful and engaging. You want your reader to be engaged. You want your listeners to be engaged. So those are some questions and statements uh, in regards to your writing that you should be asking yourself and that you should be able to be saying about your own writing. Um, and then finally, as just a last little tip on how to begin to expand your word choice is read. And don't read things that like at your reading level. Read things that are above your reading level. If you have watched any of my videos, um, you'll see that like, even in Jane Eyre, when I'm reading Jane Eyre, and I've read it a few times before, but I still come across words that I don't entirely <laughs> know how to pronounce. You know, sometimes it's that thing when you're reading something and you come across a word, like you're just, you're reading silently. So your brain is just like, okay, yeah, whatever. Um, and then when you're reading it out loud, it's like, oh, how do I pronounce that? I still do that. Um, one of the most common, like if you were to somehow get a book of mine and open it, if there were annotations in it, it would probably annotations be annotations that were defining words on that page that I didn't know. That's one of the things I like to do is if I'm reading something and it's my book, <laughs> I, you know, will put a little star next to the word. And in the, in the margins, I'll put another little star and I'll write the definition after I looked it up. Um, so reading. Reading really helps to improve your ability to improve your word choice. Uh, and then finally, I recently discovered a site called Power Thesaurus. So obviously a thesaurus is great for finding synonyms. Um, for a word that you have found. But what I love about this power thesaurus is I feel like it gives me suggestions, it gives me synonyms that are maybe a little bit closer to what I wanted. Um, so I will include a link to power thesaurus down below. I don't know about the credibility of the site, probably don't click on ads on there just use it as a thesaurus, <laughs> um, but, but yeah, I, I really like Power Thesaurus. And 
I think the final note that I'll leave with this is make sure that you are still using words that you know though. That's where the like, you know, using words that come across in a natural way for you. Don't like throw in words that if your teacher were to kind of like call you aside and say, hey, like, can you tell me what this word means that you used in your paper? You want to be able to actually do it. <laughs> so, so definitely don't pick words that just like sound big and smart. Use words that are maybe a little bit a little bit more interesting than just saying like something was beautiful, maybe say it was miraculous, um, because you can explain what miraculous means, but but anyway, you want it to still sound like you. So anyway, I hope this video has been helpful. If you are still watching, then definitely make sure to subscribe. Um, let me know in the comments below if you have any random favorite words or even if you have any words that you hate, like I hate the word rural, it's just I hate saying it. Anyway, yeah, I know a lot of people hate moist, so let me know some of your favorite words or your least favorite words. And I hope to see you back around and thanks for watching. <laughs>